I mean, seriously? I mean, we're on the air. It's right in my face. It's supposed to be. It's a microphone. (laughs) Welcome to the Nisha Jackson Show. I'm Rusty Humphreys. That's Nisha Jackson, and we're in Oregon. And I'm having a bad hair day because you made me go outside. I Well, I did, but it, was it not one of the coolest things ever? <laughs> it was extremely windy, but I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I, I, I got my head cleared out. Yes. That was good. That's important. We talked about that on a previous show. We did. That's what, So here's what I did. So I'm in Oregon getting uh, Nisha all set up, and, and she's got – look how cool she is now. Now she has her own coasters, all kinds of stuff. And uh, we so I set up the studio today. So everything – so when you're listening to the podcast and watching it, it's going to sound even better. Um, not that it hasn't sounded great, but it's going to sound a lot better. It's going to be great. It's going to be perfect. So Nisha, I've known her for a long time and this is Nisha. (laughs) I'm busy. (laughs) The phone's ringing again. I got this my 50th call. Don't bother me. So I'm setting stuff up and so it's about time to the show and I go, okay, we can't do the show this way. So I have my new little hobby. Nisha is drones. I have this cool little drone. We took it outside and we, we droned over your house and stuff. Is it cool or what? Did you enjoy no, that? It's cool. I'm really glad. But my, my hair got all messed up out there. And then you made me put these headphones on and they're just, I look like a poof ball. But the drone was super cool. Okay. You don't look like a poof ball. <laughs> but anyway. Okay. So let's get to, first of all, you have you done anything fun lately? You've, I know you've been traveling all over the place. What kind of fun things have you been doing? Um, well, I went to Palm Springs area this weekend. That was super fun. Yeah. Yep. I went dancing with my friends and that was cool. What where where in Palm Springs is fun is cool to go. Where uh, do you like to go in Palm Springs? Not that we're trying do to I have stalk to say you. this on the air. <laughs> no, no, if you don't want to, I'm just curious of what, what's kind of a cool place. Um, well, I love to go to this place called the Nest. Okay. It's on one eleven. It's between it's in Palm Desert actually, just, oh. just a little bit east of Palm Springs. And I have a whole group of friends down there, and we have so much fun. We go out to dinner. I even went and watched a world boxing match in, in, um, at, locally. Are you, are you into boxing? Yeah. Really? I know. It's kind of a contradiction because it's one of my many contradictions. Because I don't like to see people in pain. Like, it's really painful for okay. me to see people in pain. And the brain, we've talked about the brain. The brain is so important to me to keep healthy, right? Like protect the brain at all costs. And so I'm also really into boxing. Like I love to watch boxing. I grew up with a dad who liked boxing. I watched boxing all the time. And I just think it's so cool watching a boxing match. And I'm screaming, hit him in the head. Give him a double right. I don't know. It's it's nuts. Knock him out. <laughs> Guys, she, she's kind of like, um, I saw the movie Something About Mary earlier today. She's kind of like that. She picks me up in the sports car uh, and drives around. And by the way, a uh, little bit of a lead foot. Lead foot niche. Is that fair to yeah, say? Yeah, that, that might be fair. Okay. All right. So it's so fun, though. Do you get... Uh, so th- you asked me if I've been having fun. I've y- been having fun. You're having fun. I'm having fun. I'm mixing in some fun. Are you... Do you get many tickets? Oh, no. I'd never get to Because if I was a cop and I wanted to make uh, my quota, I'd just stake you out. <laughs> I'd be fine. I've been pretty lucky to not get tickets. I bet. All right. Yeah. Well, let's talk about, so what are we, what is the issue today that we are going to focus on? I would like to focus on social connections and why they're so important. Okay. I, like Facebook stuff? Well, especially since I just had that lead in about, you know, seeing my friends and you know, going boxing or watching boxing and then going dancing and, and oh, really- I'd like to see you box. <laughs> that would be fun. I don't box. Come on, come on. It's, it's Mike Tyson. Let's go. <laughs> oh, anyway, the, the thing is, is that social connections are so important. In fact, um, <clears throat> research has now shown that without social connectiveness, it is equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. If you're in social isolation, which Rusty, a lot of people are in social, social isolation now, right? I work from home. You work from home, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. A lot of people are working from home now. And the problem is, is that we're communicating with our devices all the time, right? So we're, instead of talking on the phone, like the old fashioned way, we're communicating via text. I hate that. I hate texting. I'm tired. I, I know. I, well, a lot of people are age. Well, you're a big texter, though. I do like, well, I can't talk on the phone all the time. And okay. I'm in meetings and stuff. You you're, know, like you're very important. I know it's, <laughs> you know, I, it's a lot easier. Hey, is the Pope in? Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Nisha? No, she's busy. 
Um, so, so you just like texting because it's, well, that's right. You've got your own show. So, so is it because it's just easier? It's quicker for you. That's why you like texting more. Yeah. I mean, I do like talking on the phone, but more than that, I love seeing people in person and, you know, in real life, but that's, that's, that's the, that's where the state of our world is now, right? People are just not doing face to face. They're not talking on the phone. Um, they're not making it a priority anymore to have friends over family dinners, um, you know, they would rather communicate on an email or a text and not have face to face. And that is a problem for your health because the most important thing that determines longevity, if you look at all the longevity studies, longevity meaning how long you live, right, you're following right. me, right? So the most important single factor, most important single factor to determine longevity is social connectiveness. That actually affects Human your health? human connection. Really? Yes. So it is equivalent if you don't have regular human connection to smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. That is significant. Okay. So are you suggesting go out, meet people in a bar and smoke? Yes. I'm suggesting getting a tribe. (laughs) No, I'm (laughs) suggesting getting a tribe of people, of friends together, right? Uh And, And making it a priority to have social connectedness. Because if you think about people today, they're working so hard. They have so many things on their schedule. They're climbing social ladder. I mean, they're climbing the corporate ladder or whatever they're doing. They, they have a lot going on with work and they have a lot going on with their family. Right. So I would think it'd be very, that would be easy for you. Everybody likes Nisha. You're fun. You're out with sports cars. You're going dancing and whatever. Me, I sit at home and go, uh, what's on Netflix tonight? What's at the theater? Well, I think that's really pretty coming, becoming very common. Mm-hmm. And people are tired when they come home. They don't want to go out. I hear women say this all the time. I'm exhausted. I don't want to go out. I don't want to meet with people. It's too much of a hassle. The traffic's awful. Whatever it is, it's, it's just too much of an effort to go out. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> we really need social connectedness. We need to be connected with our families if we can. And, and to find friends that we enjoy being around. So I have some tips on how you can improve your social connectedness. Okay. I need to take notes on this. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Tip number one. Don't use your internet as your primary social support. All right. I think that's pretty clear. Does that that's, mean stay off of Tinder and those kind of it's things? It's superficial. It's a superficial connection. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Right. I don't think you should be using Tinder. Anyway. Lordy, you're not. No, I'm not oh, using God. Tinder. I'm just saying if I, <laughs> if I cared to get out of her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Visit or call a neighbor, a friend. I try one time a week to literally pick up the phone and call someone and talk on the phone. Like call your grandma, call your mother, call your sister, call somebody. I can't believe how many people I talk to that say, I haven't talked to my brother in 10 years or I haven't talked to my Yeah, but I don't like my brother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> call a different brother. <laughs> call, call somebody and try to just talk on the phone because the longer you go without talking on the phone, the more you just kind of become like, it's okay, you know, I don't need to talk on the phone. And you do need to talk on the phone. You, so you think the phone is that important? I think at least the phone is more important. I mean, person to person, face to face is the best. best. Right, okay. But if, if, you, if you can't get face to face with somebody once a week, you should at least pick up the phone and call somebody once a week. Just make yourself do it. You can okay. do it. A lot of people have gotten to the point, have you heard this? Have you heard people say this? I mean, I think it's even maybe come out of my mouth a couple of times. I don't want to talk on the phone anymore. It's just irritating. I just rather text. I don't have time to talk on the phone. It's just, it just, it just no, bugs me. I'm the exact opposite. I know you I are. can't stand because you know why? Because it's way too easy to take a text wrong. Yes. It's way too easy for somebody to think that you said it a certain way. And if I said it, you know, talking, you understand it. So, yes. and plus there, that text never goes away ever. Yes, I agree. So, I agree. All right. I, and that happens a lot, especially in the workspace. It happens a lot. People don't even talk in the workspace. They're working on their computers and they're talking on phones for work yeah. and not for fun. Right. And, and they don't even talk to each other. In it's, your office? No, in my office. It's I mean, like you, one big party. You should see her it's office. It's literally one big party. It, 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 <laughs> no work gets done. Did you buy lunch for everybody today? <laughs> yes. Uh, and it wasn't like they went to McDonald's. It's like top of the line. I mean, it's like this buffet comes in. Helga's working in the buffet. I love my staff. You, uh, it's I have obvious. The be- I have the best employees in the world. And, you, and you've got a lot of cool stuff there, too. I want to talk, Can we talk about what you have in your stuff maybe next show? Yeah. 
because because there's a lot of things there that, and I've known you for a long time that I didn't know you have, really? like the pod thing. Oh yeah, the cocoon. The cocoon. Yes, the I've cocoon. seen the movie, but I want to. The find cocoon out about will that. treat you right. The cocoon will restore your life. Really? Yeah, in many ways. And then the other thing you're doing a lot is a lot more shots. But we're doing, we're doing a lot of injections. We have a whole injection menu. The happy shot, the energize me shot, the <laughs> the fat loss shot. Obviously, I have the not taken kicker that shot. One. We have a bee kicker shot, which is really good. It should not be the inject. What do you call it? The injection menu. Menu. It should be the injection section. Oh, hey, that's good stuff. Just saying. We should hire you to come through and just rename everything so just, it has a little bit of a, just a, a little pow to it. Oh, that's a little pow. <laughs> I like that. That's good. <laughs> All right. The so where are we in the, in the tips of improving our social connectivity? Okay. Volunteer. By Have way, you get, noticed get closer people... to me? It's, oh. it's, I'm not trying to run. It's just oh, we, okay. the, the screen is like, we're you like hate me. There I'm we go. Sorry. That's much better. All right. Volunteer. So many people are not volunteering. They don't have time to volunteer. Now I want to say too, that I want to say too, that, you know, cause I'm, I'm always trying to like balance this. Don't, overcommit yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked about that already that people are just, especially women. And I talk about this in my book, don't overcommit yourself. You should say no to something. Right. But, but we don't, it's like, you know, the lion's club was big for my parents and the, the Masons yeah, and stuff like right, that. And people right, never go to them anymore. Right, BFW. Right. And I think just volunteering, if you don't know how to be social, maybe you could volunteer because that helps people. Because that if you volunteer, they have to like you. They have to like you because you. <laughs> you're volunteering, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> and and the other thing is the other thing that I think is really important is to think about um, selectively picking a tribe of friends, and and I think this is true for men and women. Is sometimes I think you get to the point in your life. Um, I know I did where you know when my kids when my when we were raising kids. Um, I was really focused on the kids and I was really focused on my career and I wasn't focused on friendships at all. I didn't have time for friendships. I was very social at work, but I wasn't really social outside of work. And I okay. know I paid the price for that. How? How do well, you first of all, I don't think I laughed enough. I don't think I was, I, I love to laugh. I don't you think always I, laugh. I don't think I was laughing enough because I wasn't going out and doing really fun things with women. I, I didn't is have that the I didn't, sexist thing again. Everything about no. you is women. Why can't men have a good time? No, too? it's not sexist at all. I'm, I'm going to come out to. I'm going to come out with a brilliant burnout for men too. Okay, trust me, I have a lot to say about that. Well, I'm a good subject. <laughs> so anyway, selectively picking friends, and I'd like to suggest three types of friends that you should pick. Okay. Now, this, number one. I feel like this is universal. This could be true for men and for women. Okay, so I'll be the judge so, of that. What do you uh, think? Number three one. types of friends. I'm going to suggest that y'all try to find somebody that is a fearless adventurer. So somebody that really enjoys pulling you out of your comfort Making zone and doing something crazy. And fly a drone. Like right now I'm coming over to get you and we're going to go do something crazy. Yeah, like flying a drone. Uh -huh. Well, that wasn't super crazy, but it was cool. It was cool. It wasn't crazy. Could have been not, crazy. That's not crazy on my scale. Not crazy enough. Yeah. No, nothing's crazy on your scale. <laughs> She's the crazy one to be <laughs> hooking up with and going out with. Okay. But fearless adventure. You need someone yes. that just pulls you out of your comfort zone. Like when you just want to like you know, zone out in front of your TV, you need to have a friend that says, Russ, let's go out and do something crazy tonight. Let's go do something fun. And okay. make, like watch a movie. That might be crazy for you, right? No, that's what I do all the time. Oh, okay. So, so you, okay. okay. <laughs> I get that. That's, that's fair. I like that one. Okay. Okay. Number two. Number two is the confident counselor. You really need to have somebody who can slap you upside the head. I have a really, I have two, two really good friends that do this for me tribe friends. They're my, they're part of yeah. my tribe and they will slap me upside the head and say, Nish, you're way off on that one. You're just, you're way out there. Mm -hmm. You know, cause sometimes you just get crazy in your head and you start thinking like nutty thoughts and, and you need somebody that can pull you back in. That's sort of like your wise counselor. Okay. Right? I like that. Do now, you, why do you keep using the word tribe? What does that well, mean to okay. you? Is there a definition? Well, first of all, it's a really cool term to use now. Like it's in. It's a cool term. Okay. And, and you are the and, hipster, not and me. And everything goes full circle. When I say tribe, what do you think about? I mean, American, Native Americans. Yeah. So like we're going full circle. Like we're talking about tribes now, why it's so important to have trusted people that are connected to you, that you really value and you spend time with and they enrich your life somehow. They okay. make you a better person. All right. Right. And I'm just giving you three different examples of 
types of Which people. Which one do you think you are? I would say I'm a little bit of all of them, maybe. Mm. I'm just a I little bit of all too. of them, but not an extreme of anyone. Can I be in part of your tribe? Because you're kind of cool to hang out with. Can you I? are part of my tribe. Okay, cool. We're doing a show together. Dude, you're in. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. What's the, th- what's the third okay. friend? The third one. The sucker. And, and, and this, is, this sounds more chickish, but it really okay. applies to men too. And that's a loyal bestie. You need to have somebody, no matter what, chips are down, you totally screwed up, you know, you really upset some people, whatever, you lost your job, you did something horrible or whatever, something happened, somebody that just stays by you. And that the loyal bestie is usually someone you've had, you know, in your world for a while, but not always, because sometimes the loyal bestie now, goes in sideways ho- on in you. Hollywood in movies, the loyal bestie is usually the one that's not quite very good looking and a little heavy. <laughs> So is that, a, it, I guess I'm a loyal I'm not, bestie. I'm I don't know. Not, I'm not, I have known you for a long time. I'm not stereotyping. I'm, he is. I'm was, not, that, I'm, that, I didn't say that. That was somebody in the movies. I did not say that. I wasn't saying me. I'm saying in the movies, that's always the loyal bestie. A loyal bestie is somebody that stands by you no matter what. And mm-hmm. you need people like that that just don't waver. They just, no matter what you tell them, no matter what you do, they're right by your side. That's you know? good advice. That yeah. is. And, and uh, we all need to do that a little right. bit more. I mean, I'm sure there are some people that are very good with these. I'm, I'm not one of them. Right. And you're not either. No. No. Okay. Okay. I'm going to say one more thing. Cause I think this is important. Okay. Cause we're doing a short show today. This is okay. I, I can't, I can't do, I can't do really short, but this is the last thing I'm going to say. I think it's important that everybody takes a friend inventory or I'm going to call it a contact inventory. Okay. A contact inventory would be putting everybody that you come in contact with into three categories. The first category would be the, let's see which one do I want to start with, the energizers. The energizers are people that you come in contact with, friends, family, workers, that when you're around them, you feel awesome. You okay. feel up, you feel energized, you feel like a better person, mm-hmm. you're, you're enlightened, whatever. You just feel up. Right when you get away from them, when they leave you after being with you, you feel you just feel up, like energized. Yeah. Okay. Then there's neutrals. There's the people who, when you're with them, you don't really feel up, you don't really feel down, you just feel like, man, just kind of neutral. All right. And you want them around? I'm just giving you three categories uh, right now. You don't don't I'm, jump don't jump ahead. Okay. So the last category is drainers. And the drainers are people that when you're with them, you feel low. They have low vibration. They're negative. They don't change. They stay in their story. They, they make you feel like when you leave, you need to go have a drink right. or take a nap mm-hmm. or eat sugar or something. <laughs> so, so these are people that unfortunately, there's, there's a lot of women, and I think women are more notorious for having drainers surround them because men are like... I don't feel good with that person. I'm not calling them again. Right. You know, men are just, they just call it as they see it. And they're not like, they don't roll around and agonize about it. But women do. Women have a tendency to want to surround themselves with drainers because they want to try to save them all. And then they go down too. So just remember that your contact list should not include more drainers than energizers. You should always have more energizers than neutrals or drainers because you want people to enrich your life, to bring your vibration up. And if you're constantly like this, your vibration's here because you're taking such good care of yourself and their vibration is here, it's going to drag you down. It's not worth it. Right. No, it makes sense. So you want a woman or a friend to give you good vibrations (laughs) <laughs> and some excitations. <laughs> I knew you would get off track here. I knew, I, knew, track. I knew you would. That's a that's a classic song. But no, no, and I'm not and I'm not joking. That's that's actually very good stuff because I'm it is. I'm not very good Thank at you. that. I'm not. I'm 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 kind of somebody that's, that's a little bit more of a loner than I like to be. And I should get out more. And yes. that's that's in yeah. I know a lot of people are like and that. seek people who have the same vibration as you or higher. So mm-hmm. seek energizers because you need them in your life. And this life is difficult. There's a lot of stress in our life. Yeah. So you don't need more stress by surrounding yourself with people who are negative. There's going to be some you can't get rid of. It might right. be your child. It could be your husband. It could be your mother. But you can offset it by putting more energizer people in your life. Okay. All right. That's, I'm going to end on that. That's great stuff. Now, I, I want to talk about your practice uh, in the next show because you've got so many cool things there. And I was there. You've got this whole wall of products 
And this is not an infomercial show. You just have so much stuff. It's like, what is all this stuff? I want to find out about that. Is okay? Is that okay? I'd love to. We'll do that next time. And I uh, want to thank you very much. Make sure you subscribe to the Nisha Jackson show, if you would, please. Whether it's on uh, iTunes or Stitcher or iHeartRadio. Uh, we're on more places uh, every week. You can start If you've got Fire TV. Uh, you can see it on Apple TV, Amazon TV, Fire TV. Uh, it's really growing. Did mm-hmm. you know that? I know. I appreciate that. It's very cool. And it's a great show and everybody loves it. Everybody loves you. And uh, I'm having a great time doing this. So thank Me you, too. Nisha. Thank All right. You. Nisha, the Nisha Jackson Show. Please tell your friends, share this show around, and we'll see you next time right here on the Nisha Jackson Show. Bye.